Welcome to No Aim No Gain. So you're looking to purchase a vehicle from a dealership but you haven't done your research. Well it's a good thing you've come to this video today because I'm going to be discussing with you um, ways dealers make money and potentially how they rip you the consumer off. Now car dealerships they run into customers every single day whereas on the other hand on an average a customer purchases a vehicle once every six years. So who do you think is going to have the upper hand in this scenario? Well obviously it's the car dealership. So if you stick to the end today I'm going to discuss how you can minimize ways that you can reduce the potentially getting ripped off by these car dealerships. Now firstly we need to discuss how dealerships make a majority of their money. There's three main ways that they make money. So the first one is car financing. Dealerships hate it on a rare occasion it does happen when you pay for the money up front in cash. Why? Because they make their money off financing. So it's just an incentive for them to try to even um, explain to you that you can probably look at getting the lower monthly repayments or actually even uh, the deposit. They'll even uh, work with you to try to get a lower deposit but it's all for you to sign the paper and uh, take the vehicle away. So if you're going to um, take finance uh, on the vehicle regardless then I'd advise you to shop around beforehand um, to get a lower APR. Um, if they can, if the dealerships uh, have got the lowest APR then fair enough go ahead but really do your shopping around first. The second way is a trading So dealerships make their money from uh, when you trade in your vehicle so typically they'll always even though there's nothing wrong with the vehicle they always somehow manage to always point out uh, a scratch or a dent and they'll always drop the value of the vehicle. If you can I would highly recommend that you sell your vehicle as opposed to trading in your uh, vehicle in because they can make a lot of money. Um, on the back of selling your vehicle. Now a lot of consumers they just don't have the time and they just want to get it over and done with but realistically if if they give you a good price on the new vehicle then just be known that they're going to be actually underestimating your vehicle. There's some um, websites, online websites where they'll actually give you a figure for your vehicle but on the day when it comes to actually them go around the vehicle then all of a sudden start to pick out um, r things that are wrong with the vehicle what, are, what ends up happening is that they'll offer you a significantly lower amount for your vehicle and then because you've already brought the vehicle to them they're just going to you're just going to go along with it and that's the psychological trick that they play next thing the next way dealers are very clever is when they bring you to the dealership they are very, they're very clever and very cunning in the sense that um, they'll give you a, a cup of coffee, they'll uh, try to be very friendly and um, don't try to negotiate negotiation. So when it comes down to negotiating, these car sales pe people are very clever. They do this on a day to day basis. So somebody like you going to come in and think you're going to get um, a good price, you actually um, kidding yourself. Another trick that they'll try to do is they'll play along with the negotiation plea so they'll walk out the um, they'll walk out the chair and they'll say let me just give you a couple of minutes I'm just gonna go speak to my manager they'll come in and come back to the seat again seating position they'll do this a couple of times and then they'll say finally um, we can get it down to this price now you they do this again psych psychologically to make you think that you've won in the negotiation process but in essence um, it hasn't really hit their bottom line they're still going to make a, a large sums of money now like I mentioned there's not really much room for you to negotiate the only thing that you can potentially do is value the vehicle how much you're looking to pay for the vehicle uh, get a la at least about three four good quotes and then you could put uh, this in front of the you can put this in, f in front of the, the salesperson 
Um, you really need to put yourself into the driver's seat here. I mean, you need to show to them that you're you you're willing to negotiate with them uh, on the back of that they negotiate with you a good price based on the market value of the vehicle and also be, be willing to walk away number three the third way that they make uh, money off of you um, They'll also try to sell you um, gap insurance or uh, payment, um, a paint protection for your vehicle. Now, they won't just sell you straight away. Once you've taken the finance out, they'll say they'll they'll tell you, well, it's only going to cost you an extra ten pound onto your finance. Um, so why not go ahead with it? You're taking out the finance anyway. So what? What's a how is that extra five, ten pound a month going to hurt you? So you're going to look at it like that. But if you look at it spread out over the course of um, the the actual payments, um, then it's, it does it actually all adds up. So these are my key uh, takeaways of how the the car dealerships make money. Um, always always factor these in. Um, if you're going to trade in your vehicle, I would definitely uh, recommend you actually. Um, put on cap on how much you want for the vehicle um, in regards to financing um, look for a low uh, a, a competitive API in mind before actually taking what the dealers are, ships are offering you and in regards to the add-ons uh, pre-anticipate whether or not you want to take on these add-ons because again they all add up you may have seen a vehicle that you may be interested in but and it's got a very good price but it's probably uh, been discounted for a reason. These dealerships might uh, advertise a, a vehicle with a low price for reasons such as a poor color or something, something about the vehicle such as a, a low spec vehicle. But look at it from the perspective that Ron, when you got to sell the vehicle later on, fewer people are actually gonna anticipate purchasing the vehicle from. That's why the reason why it's so cheap and it seems like a bargain. So I hope you've take something very valuable today or what discussed today and um, you really need to factor these things in. Really appreciate it today if you like this video and uh, subscribe and hit the bell notification because we're going to be putting a, a lot more content in future in, in regards to what I've discussed today and um, it's going to add a lot of value to your life. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned.